Welcome gamers, today we uncover exclusive insights from an enlightening interview with legendary game director Hidetaka Miyazaki, where he reveals the intricate development process behind this expensive DLC. From new weapons and magic to the unraveling of plot twists, we'll explore every aspect of this captivating addition to the Elden Ring universe. Let's dive right in. In the interview with Bonfire, Miyazaki revealed that the decision to present Shadow of the Earth Tree as a large-scale DLC stemmed from pre-existing ideas during Elden Ring's development. The game was intriguingly woven around George R. R. Martin's mythology, which proven vast and challenging to incorporate entirely into the main storyline. Rather than intentionally structuring content as DLC, these elements naturally existed within the game's framework from the outset. Comparing Elden Ring to previous titles like Dark Souls, which often featured multiple DLC, the interviewer questioned the consolidation of content into one DLC. Miyazaki explained that Elden Ring's focus on expansive exploration and grand adventure necessitated a cohesive, singular experience. Fragmenting the world into separate DLCs risked diluting the sense of freedom and adventure that the game aimed to deliver. Addressing concerns about balancing enemy difficulty in the DLC, Miyazaki indicated that it would align with the challenges typically encountered in the later stages of the main game. By this point, players would have honed their skills and acquired a solid grasp of the game mechanics. To accommodate varying player levels and progression, the DLC introduced a new gameplay element, allowing players to adjust the challenge intensity. For instance, those seeking greater difficulty could forego attribute upgrades, while others could opt to enhance their character strengths to overcome formidable force. When asked about the impact of new weapons and magic in the DLC, Miyazaki highlighted the significant addition of eight new weapon categories, alongside fresh combat skills and spells. This expansion promised not only a renewed gaming experience, but also the opportunity for players to devise new strategies and tactics. Importantly, these enhancements aren't confined solely to the DLC. Players can seamlessly integrate them into the main game, offering an exciting prospect of revisiting familiar challenges with newfound tools. Regarding the dual objectives of the DLC, Miyazaki likened its progression to that of the main game, with entering the DLC akin to venturing into the second half of the main storyline. However, However, he hinted at hidden elements and unexplored content that could provide novel experiences even for seasoned players. This dual layered approach adds depth and intrigue to the DLC's narrative and gameplay. In response to inquiries about the DLC duration and recommended play order, Miyazaki acknowledged the challenge of estimating playtime accurately, citing the discrepancy between initial estimates and actual gameplay experiences. He emphasized the team's ongoing exploration of the game, rendering traditional playtime metrics less relevant. As for play order, Miyazaki advised players to follow their preferences, but suggested experiencing the DLC after completing the second half of the main storyline. This sequence allows for a more seamless transition between the DLC and the main game's subsequent chapters, enhancing overall narrative continuity and player immersion. In this interview, Miyazaki shed light on the plot details of the DLC. When asked if the DLC would address lingering plot questions or introduce new content, he indicated that some mysteries from the main game would find resolution. Solution. However, he couldn't guarantee additional revelations beyond that. Overall, the DLC aims to deepen players' understanding of the game's world and narrative. Regardless whether the main game's story would be revised alongside the DLC release, Miyazaki clarified that, akin to their other titles, the players' own gameplay experiences shape the narrative. Thus, there are no plans to alter the main game's plot through DLC updates. While bug fixes may occur, the core storyline remains untouched. Delving into the symbolism of the concept art for Shadow of the Earth Tree, Miyazaki explained the presence of curtains in the background as representing the physical separation between the Land of Shadows and other realms. In the promotional video, the disappearance of these curtains upon Mikela's gesture serves to underscore the concept of sealed worlds, emphasizing the thematic boundaries between different lands and dimensions. In regards of the disappearance of the curtains and the depiction of the broken Earth Tree, Miyazaki hinted at a world where the wheel is distorted and gradually collapsing, suggesting a thematic portrait trail of this unsettling reality. When asked about new factions and their influence in the Land of Shadows, Miyazaki noted that the concept of power is subjective. While new groups will emerge, existing organization will also be further developed. Regarding the presence of familiar NPC characters and their potential return to the main game,
game, Miyazaki explained that while new independent characters will feature in the DLC, direct NPC returns are unlikely due to potential narrative conflicts. However, indirect appearances of known characters throughout the story are guaranteed. Addressing the impact of player choices from the main game on the DLC's narrative and possibility of multiple endings, Miyazaki clarified that the DLC operates as an independent entity. Thus, player choices in the main game won't affect the DLC's storyline. While there isn't a traditional ending, players will still encounter significant choices throughout the DLC's gameplay, although not as numerous as those in the main storyline. Miyazaki clarified that Shadow of the Earth Tree stands as a sole DLC planned for Elden Ring, with no additional content in the pipeline. However, he hinted at the possibility of future expansions, acknowledging from software's inclination to keep the future of IPs open-ended. While the focus remains on Elden Ring's current storyline, Miyazaki stressed the importance of retaining possibilities for future developments. When asked about potential future projects and the stories he'd like to explore, Miyazaki remained evasive, citing his identity and game-making process as barriers to providing a concrete answer. He hinted at potential spoilers and emphasized his approach of simultaneous thinking and creation, which introduces numerous variables and uncertainties. Consequently, he refrained from divulging specific details regarding future game narratives. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all things gaming. And don't hesitate to leave a comment below with your thoughts and theories about the upcoming DLC. Until next time, happy gaming!